Motor here with Let's Brick It Out. In this episode, I'm gonna teach you the tips, tricks, and techniques that goes into creating a custom cardboard box to proudly ship and display your Lego models. A lot of people have been looking at this online, um, looking at the reveal, and they really love the quality of the box and the whole assembly of it. So today, I'm gonna to start by creating a custom cardboard box that will safely contain this spaceship all packaged up, getting ready to take it to a convention for a display. I'll then continue the series with how I do the graphic design and the product design to jacket the box in some high-end photography. Roll the intro. So here we go. Maybe you're getting into the hobby and you've constructed some sort of model which is fairly delicate like this one and you want to get it to a convention and you don't want it completely destroyed by the time you arrive, hitting all those railroad tracks and potholes, um, you need to construct a box. So the first step is to measure out what you think the box dimensions will need to be. Um, or you can just use an Amazon box. I'm going to start with clean cardboard uh, because it gives the best surface to jacket it later on. 18 inches. I'm just going to measure real quickly here. Uh, maybe 14 and 4 inches tall should do the trick. Uh, my first tip for getting everything ready to be packed in is the reason I measured the box like this is all of these delicate parts will tend to get broken apart. So what I've done is I've taken off and lightly disassembled the model. I've got the landing gear off. I've got this engine cluster off. I've got these little pieces here. And one trick or tip they'll tell you about is I like to use these zipping storage bags. They're relatively cheap. Um, you can use the, 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 the ones that you pinch close, but I prefer the zippers. They're just easier to use and a lot faster, so I can save some time during setup. But if I place the components in here, uh, one thing that'll do is if I've just dusted this, it'll keep the dust off for long-term storage. Also, I can put some delicate bits in here. And these, of course, will then with the next trick I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna lock them into place. So people who move, who have large Lego collections will often use cling wrap to wrap everything down and hold it together. So if it does break, it at least stays in one place. And what I have here is a metal straw. You could use any straw really, it doesn't matter. I just do this quite a bit. So I've decided to be a little bit more eco-friendly, bought a metal straw. And if I zip this most of the way closed, and I pinch it, what I'll do is suck the air out of this creating a vacuum seal, which is gonna hold all the little pieces in place no matter how badly they get shaken. So that's a pretty good tip and trick. Now I'm gonna suck uh, at the largest gap, get it way down in there, try, start sucking the air out here. And there you can see by sucking the air out, the plastic has come and really gripped everything nice and tight. So now, you know, as it gets shaken or the box moves around, those delicate pieces are pretty much locked into place by forming a vacuum seal around them. So using a straw in one of these bags is a really great tip or technique for packing up delicate items going to a show. And I'll just uh, continue on with some of these other bits and bind them up in a vacuum seal. When I suck the air out, I'm still continuing to suck the air as I take the straw out. It helps um, vacuum form this part down so the air doesn't rush back in. And that was, uh, you know, that was good enough to keep this one locked together. That worked pretty well. I'm 
Now, if you notice, I'm kind of holding space apart. Pretty standard way to go. Now you want to leave um, areas around so the bag will collapse and grip everything together. You're also looking for the largest amount of negative space. Uh, so that's why I put the straw there, angled it. Start to close it up, then pinch and hold here to try to keep as, as little air from flowing back in as possible. And there you go. Now this thing can get hit pretty hard and it won't move around. So that's one great tip. And yeah, I think as I'm, if I make the box, I might be able to do something like this or this, or maybe even I'll figure out a way when I, once I get to constructing it. But that's the first step, taking measurements and locking everything together so that I can then drop it in and have pockets going around this so I could stand things up or just kind of slide them in between these gaps here. That might be the way I'll do it. I don't know. Maybe something like that. Cool. On to the next step. So I'm pretty good at just measuring things in my head and visualizing things and how they come together, uh, but not everyone is like that. So one tip and trick is that you can always Make a drawing of how you want your box to be based on the measurements of your model and then proceed from there. So one measurement I had is 18 inches long by 10 inches wide by four inches tall for the main body of the spaceship. And what I'll do is I have graph paper here. Each one of these squares is 10. And let's go by the half inch. So each one of these will be five inches. So, I don't know, I'll start uh, here, I guess. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. Take away 2, that's 18. 18 by 10 for the main body. So the main body of the spaceship is going to be that big. And the two main wings, when I stand them up, are six and a half inches long, two and, and a quarter wide by four inches tall again. So I know that I have to go at least two and a quarter. Let's make it three inches. One, two, three or two and a half. Because they're two and a quarter and I want them to be snug. So five would be that, six, six and a half. Right there. And then, so two and a half from five, or no, one and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a half. That's going to be the other wing. And then I know, I know in my heart of hearts that all the other pieces are going to be a couple inches wide. So if I just guess an extra half, I'll take that half inch and move it over. So now I've got one, two, three, 13. Let's add another inch for those thin front wings. And I'll give that an inch and a half. with lots of room left over for the engine pod and the other parts. And also I know that the front of the model's kind of got this U-shaped in it. So I'm probably gonna have to, uh, you know, from the wings, make some sort of cross-section-y 
thing like that to keep it from flopping around. But in the end, that's going to be 18, 18 by 14 by four. Um, and because I want to design graphics for this, I want the outside of the box to be 18 by 14 to make the illustration and the photo print easier to manage rather than some eighths of an inch, a quarter of an inches. So when I construct the box and tape it together, um, I'm going to have to account for the fact that I want the outside to be 18 by 14 by four inches high, meaning that the cardboard thickness is going to have to be inset. There's going to be some little tricky things I have to do to account for that. So really quickly, that's my, that's my plan. I'm sticking to it. On to the next step. Bye. Okay. So I've got my piece of cardboard, roughly clean piece of cardboard to start with. A couple of tools. I do have that corked backed ruler, a pencil, and if I need to draw a really long line, I have this leftover quarter round. Um, yeah, for molding. And it's not exactly straight, but it's straight enough to get a really long line if I need one. So I have determined that I think I'm going to make this 18 by 14 by four inches high. And I always look for the natural seam in the cardboard to start with. That will be the baseline that I know is square. So I don't have to use a square, I can just use a ruler. And I've noticed that this is not four inches high. So I'm going to wind up with a crease when I should have a straight part in the box, but that's okay. I'm going to show you a, uh, a trick using tape to straighten that back out as best as possible later on. But as far as measuring, now I made a boo-boo when I did this. So the trick that most people would have done is just measure it straight out. And you can't do that. If you want the final result of the box to be 18 by four by four, you have to account for the thickness of the cardboard itself and deduct that from what you're doing. So this is an eighth of an inch thick. So as the cardboard gets cut, it's going to grow by the width of the cardboard. So what I need to do is take that eighth of an inch off the four inches. So if I fold this up where that cut will be, I'm going to take it back to there and the 18 inches is going to need to shorten. Let me think. Nope, four inches high, so that's okay. 18 inches though needs to come in by two sides to there, and then it's going to be four inches high. So I think I think I messed up. So the height is okay. It's the folding that's not. So. I'll mix that four inches, take this in by two, that's why I use a pencil, let's quickly erase some of this stuff, it's garbage, and for more accuracy you can always use the mark instead of the edge of the ruler. So four inches would be there. Okay. So that's the way that works it is taking off those two down so that this will be now 18 inches wide once I cut and lift the sides. And I have to do this on the other side. Now here's another trick. Once you've done your measurements, when you draw a pencil line, 
In order to keep the end of this sharp and not going blunt, you want to rotate the pencil as you draw. So by rotating it, you're constantly putting a thin line down. And there you go. Pencil thin. That's where the term comes from. It's by rotating the pencil as you go. And you can rotate it one way and then another and continue rotating as you go. So that's another trick is if you're ever drawing lines and doing a blueprint type thing, you also want to make sure your pencil is not wobbling back and forth, left and right, keeping it straight. And that's what keeps the pencil lead, lead from getting blunt before you need to sharpen it next time. So you're almost self-sharpening the lead by rotating the pencil as you go. That's a fun little hint. Okay, so that is my 18 inches minus that. And I said I wanted 14. So once again, because the folds are gonna take an eighth of an inch, I need to go back and make it 14 and three quarters. No, 13 and three quarters. 13 and three quarters to account for the thickness of the cardboard. 13 and three quarters. Now, once I line the ruler up, you'll notice that I'm accounting for the thickness of the lead. That's another thing that you should look out for is if you need exact measurements, you wanna look at the thickness of your lead and make sure they're falling on the lines as you use your ruler. Once again, rotate, 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 rotate. And there you go. So this is now going to be the box for the most part, I'm gonna, because this cardboard box is much larger, I'm gonna have to uh, measure this last edge and trim it back a little bit so that I can show you the process of how you cut cardboard. All right, on to the next step. Okay, I got my cardboard trimmed down just a little bit. So the next step is cutting. And for this, I'm gonna use a box cutter I do change the blades quite often because cutting paper really wears blades out. And this is where the corkback non-slip ruler, that corkbacking gives a little bit of non-slip, which is really what you want when you're cutting using sharp blades and steel on steel. I've got my measurement here. And then what I use, I always use a piece of scrap. So there's this piece of scrap here you can see I've been cutting on it for quite a bit. Things are starting to fall apart. And it's gonna get pretty dirty in here, but uh, I've already cut this line here for the edge of the box. This will be another edge of the box. This is an edge. That's an edge right there. And first of all, I will talk a little bit about how you want to uh, cut your cardboard. So in order to be safe, your hands are your deal is you want to try to not, your underboard, you don't want to cut along the way the cardboard perforation runs. So cutting sideways along cardboard is always going to be more difficult than cutting through the cardboard where the corrugations are running. So if I lift this up, you can see the corrugations are here. So this cut's going to be a lot easier. And if I start, I'll line that up. Take a look at my pencil marks. So the easier cut is gonna be from here to here. Uh, don't rush it. I would say the big trick is you never cut all the way through. You wanna make multiple passes. So the first one is the scoring cut. And the scoring cut is gonna go, is just to break the surface and 
just like that. So it's not all the way through, but I've broken the surface. And now that I've created a channel in there, I can come along with multiple passes using even pressure, because if you press really hard, you have a tendency to go to the side and you're going to nail yourself, which is really bad. Um, if you do a lot of cutting or you're working over a piece of art, have super glue ready. So if you do thonk yourself really hard, um, you can get your finger out of the way of the artwork before you start bleeding all over it. And you can close even a decent sized wound with super glue. And then you can keep working your project if it's an all nighter for school or something like that. Um, but there you go, there's one part of it. Now the cross is always more difficult. So this one may take more than a few tries. The idea is you want to score it and never lift the ruler. So I'm doing it properly now. I lifted the ruler before just to show you. But as you get deeper and deeper, you'll start to feel it cutting through that bottom layer of cardboard. And then you can come back and do that last little bit. to get the piece to come out. All right. So that's one down. And what I like to do normally, if I can, is cut from the inside corner outwards. That way I'm pressing the blade through and I ensure that, that I don't have to do that little trick over there. It's just that with this camera set up and all these wires and everything, um, I'm not doing it how I normally would. This is how I'd normally do it. Start from the corner, go out, take a couple passes. Line up your ruler with the furthest end of the line. Account for the thickness of the blade. Start at the corner. Score it. Second pass, the third pass should do it. And there you go. That's as clean of a cut as you could possibly get. Um, while I'm here, I might as well do this one. Now, ideally, I would want to always make sure that I cut and put the ruler protecting the inside of the box like this. Okay, and that's so if your blade drifts, it doesn't drift into the box. Okay, but because I can't turn this around and lean over, because the last thing you want to do is dent the cardboard by putting yourself on it. I'm going to take the risk that I might drift into the box and do it like this. And once again, Score. And I only do about six inches at a time, maybe six to nine inches at a time before moving it down. So being patient pays off. I can feel that came off. That was a good cut. Once again, I'd ideally I'd like to do it this way. In fact, I'll show you what I do. I didn't want to lift up the piece of cardboard, but I'm just going to do it anyway, just to get this done. Work from the inside corner out. Inside corner out. There you go. As clean as could be. As clean as can be expected.
Okay, now it's time to score this cardboard so that the sides fold up. And this is exactly like you'd think it would be. It's what I call the scoring cut, which is you want to just only break that first layer of cardboard. And boom, there you go. And that's why I offset the thickness, is if you notice, the thickness is now, the width of the cardboard is now going to be on that side. That was going with the grain of the cardboard. So I was being very gentle. On the cross cuts, the cross section of the cardboard, you're going to have to use a little bit more pressure. There you go. Check that out. Okay. Boom. So if I measure correctly, everything's going to fold up just like it should. Cool. So the next step is going to be taping. Let me do a little bit of cleanup here and then I will get into how to tape this box um, so it's nice and perfect as much as possible. Get some of that yucky stuff off. See you soon. Okay, for taping, um, there's a couple of uses for tape. And <clears throat> I'm gonna teach you how to tape something properly, I guess it's called. First thing I gotta do is I've got this uh, fold or crease here. So in order to get that crease out, I'm just gonna bend it back a little bit to try to straighten the cardboard out naturally. Now, I always use a little piece of tape on the end. It doesn't hurt. But when you're taping, what you wanna do is always be stretching the tape. So you see, I'm gonna lay it down at one end and I'm going to put tension on it until the other end goes down like that. And then I'm going to smooth from the center out to try to minimize the amount of bubbles. And I had a little bit of rippling going on there, so let me pull it back. And once again, I'm putting tension on that tape. And so this piece of tape, now it's sticking to both sides. It's gonna create this little air pocket, but it's gonna keep that seam when we're done from still being a fold. And then I'll come in here, just make sure I trim this piece of tape. Save that for later. Turn it around, clean up the edge. Clean up the edge on both sides. Let's do the other side, okay? Once again, putting tension on that sucker. Smooth it out, center out, center to the edges. And now the natural tension of that tape that's sort of inside the structure now is going to keep that fold nice and straight and smooth for later on. Come back in there. And yeah, I have to angle the scissors. If you notice, I have to angle them a little bit for that other side. 
because the blade doesn't lie flush when I'm cutting. So that now that this is down, this is how you tape a corner. So you notice that everything has a little bit of tension. It wants to explode. That's good. What I will do, you can hear the dog going nuts probably upstairs. Can't be helped. I don't have a professional studio. Eyeball that a bit. Come in with a nice clean cut. Once again, a little bit of tension. Now what I want to do is hold this. So I did tension going lengthwise, this direction, this direction. I'm going to come down, hold these like that. So there is the cardboard gap you have to account for. So you hold them in place and using tension, this time in this direction, I'm going to come in like that and smooth it from the edge outwards like that. So hopefully you can see what I did there. Tension that way. And then as I held it in place with my finger, I came around the end and smoothed it in that direction. You can hear my dog Violet going nuts up there. Must be some sort of squirrel running around. And she does not like the squirrels. They mock her from afar. There we go. Just a touch of tension there. Come in. And smooth that out. Two of three, two of four sides done. I've got the box taped. All I have to do is put tape over these edges <clears throat> and that will make it the outside all cleaned up. So I'm going to come in here. It's going to lay it flat. Eyeball it, putting tension on it. Lay it on, smooth it from the center out to the edge, put my little piece of clear tape on there, cut that, and once again center out, 
putting tension, tension, tension on it. And there you go. Smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Oops, I got a little crease. So if you do get a crease, um, kind of glad this mistake happened. So if you do get a little crease in there, I like to push it together into a little ridge. Okay. And if you're really perfectionist, or you're really doing an important surface, you can then nick, nick that ridge off by putting the blade flush to the surface. As long as you have a sharp enough edge. And this blade's getting a little dull because it should have just smoothly taken that whole thing off really cleanly. And it's not. And there I go, that ridge is gone gone. I'm not gonna worry about for the rest of these uh, as long as I smooth them in. Um, the spray adhesive is very forgiving as well as the jacketing. And besides, if this is just a convention box, I wouldn't be going through the amount of finishing details that I am here. But that gets that edge now totally secured and taped. I can feel it getting stronger by the moment. Every piece of tape I put down, the box is getting stronger and a little bit more polished. There we go. So that's how you uh, fold cardboard and tape it down. So the next part is laying the model in and starting to build up some superstructure to hold everything in place. Okay, so the base of the cardboard box was finished. Now I can start placing the model in there. And one thing I wanna do is make sure that it stays fit. And one way I do that is by bracing it perfectly snug so it can't move around too much. And I was thinking that the sides, the reason I gave a little bit of extra oomph, is I can then place these pieces in and make little compartments. I love making little compartments, they really help. And yeah, I think I'll tape this one down. It's looking pretty good. lift the model up for that. And notice I'm creasing the edge with my nail before flattening it out. It's gonna give a really nice fit and finish.
And there are the bodies in there. So I think what I need next is to cut some inserts. Here's a pinch tape mark. This is how you do inner corners. You want to set it in there, work it in until you hold it tight with your nail, crease it flush, and then smooth outwards and down. I'm going to show you that again. Crease it. Start rolling it. Take your nail, crease it into the corner, and smooth it into place.
pretty good. There we go. There's the lid. So everything's now pretty much safe and sound. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned some stuff. I'm going to have some cleanup to do, but overall, I think the next part will be designing and printing and gluing the wrap across the box. Till next time, have a great day. Bye. So in my great haste shooting this, I forgot one final step, one final um, way of packing that I normally do and kind of forgot about it. So I'm here to do one last quick tip and trick, which is I have um, shop towels. So 52 pack, 100% cotton towels. These are available at hardware stores or big box stores or whatever they are. And uh, straight out of the box, this is the final step, is you notice that the model uh, doesn't lie flat. And when that happens, I can just come in with a cotton towel. I can come in and roll it up. And I can create padding underneath that will support the model and be a good way um, to just give it that little extra bit of comfort and care uh, while I drive. And also it's like a little bit of shock absorber protection. So just eyeballing it. Oh, a little too much on that end. Maybe I didn't need that. There I go. Now it's sinking in all nice and soft. Um, and now I can even put this in the corner, kind of lay some extra padding down, uh, like that and like that. And I always like to put pockets on the sides if I can, or front and back in case this falls off a cart and smashes or goes end over end. It's a little bit of peace of knowledge or peace of mind to get it where it needs to go. These other ones, because they're in Ziplocs, I don't have to worry about them too much. And these guys, uh, I guess I could put, you know, cut a towel in half and put them in there, but at this point I'm not going to. I think this one's gonna take a hit pretty well. 
But yeah, taking uh, cotton towels, shop towels, straight out of when you bought them, straight fresh new, and putting them in there as padding is, I think, kind of a nice cheap way to finish out the boxing of the package to get it where it needs to go without getting completely wrecked along the way. And besides, once you're at a convention, having a bunch of towel, hand towels, clean cotton towels, shop towels, um, is not a bad thing to have. Uh, just like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, these towels are super handy. Um, not just for packing, but for any spills or weirdness or craziness or dusting or um, cleaning. Uh, if you get them wet um, and wring them out, you can, uh, you know, always clean something, pick up something. Uh, they're super handy, not just for the storage uh, part of it. So going with towels is probably a great little trick uh, that I wanted to talk to you about. But that pretty much finishes it up uh, as far as getting a container and, uh, for your model. Bye. And there we are. The box is all done. The model's tucked inside. Everything is clean and ready to go. And I know this is gonna be a longer type video, but I can tell you it is much shorter and much cheaper than a four-year college art degree in design. So hopefully you can watch this. You've got all the tools necessary. You know what supplies you need and practice, practice, practice to get those clean tape lines, the measuring, the drawing, the planning, the construction, everything you need to make a custom box to make sure that your custom Lego model makes it to a convention on time and that you can set it up without any fear of something breaking. And until next time, play well, everyone.